Today, we are going to talk about factoring greatest common factors. In this unit, you will often use the distributed property backwards. For example, if you see something that looks like AB plus AC, you can undistribute that and undistribute the A and write it as A times B plus C. So let's see what happens when we distribute this. A times B is AB plus A times C is AC. So that's what we got originally. So we're just undistributing it. And I'm going to show you what that looks like today. So it says factor by finding the GCF and factoring it out of this expression. Check your work to see if you've done it correctly. So there's actually three things they're asking us to do for each problem. The first thing that we need to do is we need to find the GCF. So let's do that first on example one. On example one, we want to begin by finding the GCF of 6x plus 3. What you might find helpful to do is draw out your list of factors. Now, some of you might be able to look at 6x plus 3 and know the GCF immediately. And if you can do that, that is amazing. Go ahead and write down your GCF. If you're struggling to find your GCF, that is more than okay. Write out your list and that will help you identify your GCF. So the factors of 6x are 1 times 6, 2 times 3, and then we have an x. My factors of 3 are 1 times 3. So the greatest number they have in common is 3. Now this one has an x and this one does not. So x cannot be a part of my GCF because it's not in common with both of the factors. So my GCF is 3. That was step 1. Step 2 is to factor it out of the expression. This is when we're doing the distributed property backwards. So what you're going to do is you're going to write down your GCF of 3 and you're going to put your parentheses. We have a plus sign here, so I'm going to have a plus sign here. And what I want you to do is imagine if you were to distribute this 3. 3 times what would give me a 6x? Well, it's going to be 2x. And then 3 times what would give me 3? And that's 1. This is our answer. Now, if you're like, whoa, 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 hold up. I have no idea what you just did. I'm going to show you again. So once you have your GCF of 3, you need to figure out 3 times what gives me 6x. Now, one way to do this is thinking about division, right? 6x divided by 3 is 2x. 3 divided by 3 is 1. If that helps you, then totally think about it like division. Another way to think about it is you can cross off the factor that you didn't use. And then you can see here, let me grab my pen back, 3 times what? Well, let's see what's left. 2x plus 3 times what? Well, all we have left here is a 1. So by drawing out your list, that can help you identify different things too. The wonderful thing about factoring is that you can check your work to know right away if you have the correct answer. So you'll be able to get a 100 on your next assessment or practice or test or skills check or whatever it is that you're doing because you'll know right away if you have the right answer or not. To check your work, write down your answer. So we have 3 times 2x plus 1. And all we have to do is a distributive property. 3 times 2x is 6x, and 3 times 1 is 3. Is this answer our original problem? Yes. So we have done everything correctly with this one. Let's try another example. On example 2, the first thing that we need to do is we need to find the greatest common factor here. Go ahead and pause this video and identify the GCF. If you have identified the correct GCF, you would have gotten 8x. 
And so we can go ahead and factor out that 8x. You write your GCF on the outside of the parentheses. Here I have a minus sign. So I'm going to have a minus sign in the middle. And now we're doing that distributive property. 8x times what would give me 24x squared? Well, that's going to be 3x. And then 8x times what would give me 8x? And that's 1. So our answer is 8x times 3x minus 1. Now, if you're having a hard time finding the GCF, I recommend that you write out your lists. My factors of 24 are 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6, and then I have 2x's for my x squareds. For 8x, my factors are 1 times 8, 2 times 4, and then we have an x. So here the greatest number we have in common is 8, and the, num um, the largest amount of x's we have in common is 1, so our GCF is 8x. 24x squared divided by 8x is 3x. 8 squared, or sorry, 8x divided by 8x is 1. Again, you can check your work. So our answer is 8x times 3x minus 1. 8x times 3x is 24x squared. 8x times negative 1 is negative 8x. This was our original problem, so we did everything correctly. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can identify the GCF of the remaining three um, examples. And then resume the video once you find the GCF. If you're feeling confident, go ahead and try and factor it out as well. The more practice you do of this, the easier it will be able to just look at the problem and identify the GCF. When I look at this problem, I can see that my GCF is going to be 2. If you're not sure, write out your list. The factors of 4x are 1 times 4, 2 times 2, and x. The factors of 10 are 1 times 10 and 2 times 5. The largest number that they have in common is 2. Once you identify that GCF, you can go ahead and factor it out. We will be left with 2x plus 5 inside of the parentheses. This will be your answer. Again, I know this because 4x divided by 2 is 2x and 10 divided by 2 is 5. Another way of looking at it, if you cross off the number pairs that you didn't use, you're going to have 2 times 2x, and then over here you'll have 2 times 5. So that's another way of doing it. To check your answer, we're just going to go ahead and use a distributive property. 2 times 2x is 4x, and 2 times 5 is 10. This was the original, so we did it correctly. The greatest common factor of the next one, now here we have three terms. We're just looking for the greatest one out of all three. And if you look at all three terms, the greatest common factor is three. So we're going to write three down in front. 12x squared divided by three is 4x squared. Bring down my minus sign. 9x divided by three is 3x bring down my plus sign, 15 divided by 3 is 5. This is my answer. Again, you can check your answer by using the distributed property and seeing if you get the original problem. 3 times 4x squared is 12x squared. 3 times negative 3x is negative 9x. 3 times 5 is 15. This was the original problem, so I know I did it correctly. On example five, this one's a little bit tricky. <clears throat> Excuse me, your GCF is 1x, or you could just say x, because 1x and x are the same thing. 
So I'm going to go ahead and factor out that x. If I factor an x out of this, I'm going to have 2x squared minus, if I factor an x out of this one, it's just going to have one less x. So instead of 3x squared, I'll have 3x plus, if I factor an x out of 5x, all I'll have left is 5. This is my answer. We can check our answer by using the distributive property. x times 2x squared is 2x cubed. x times negative 3x is negative 3x squared. x times 5 is 5x. This was the original problem, so we did it correctly.